All right, then welcome back everyone. Let's solve this question. NIT destroys the universe. I hope you read the question once. Um, so what this question is? First, we define this operation max of s. What is max of s? Is? Uh, s will be a collection of integers, and uh, max of s simply returns the smallest non-negative integer that does not appear in s. So basically, if you have 0, 1, 2, uh, max of this 0, 1, 2 array will be 3 because 3 is the smallest non-negative integer part uh, not present in this array. So if you have an uh, array like 1, 2, 3, uh, then max of this array would be 0, right? It is the smallest non-negative integer that does not appear in s. Right, so this guy NIT tries to destroy the universe. So what is what does it mean? Is it, it tries to convert all their elements to zero, right? So destroying means convert all their elements to zero, and it has only one operation in its hand. What is that operation? Pick two integers L and R. L and R basically array is one based index, right? So basically pick two bounds in an array and replace all the array elements, basically AL, AL plus one, till AR with max of S. Right. So we have operation max defined, small max defined that I already discussed. Then what we want to do is we want to destroy the array, basically make all the elements to, to zero. With only one operation so basically uh, we can perform this operation any number of times so that operation is basically pick two indexes basically pick two bounds l and r right two integers l and r which are of course greater than or equals to one less than equals to n okay and replace all the elements in that uh, sub segment basically a l l plus one till a r with mix basically max m e x whatever we were to pronounce it uh, max of s basically max of this uh, sub segment that's what you want to do and uh, we want to find out the minimum number of times NIT needs to snap his fingers. Basically, uh, snapping a finger is uh, basically uh, picking L and R and replacing all the elements in that subsegment with max of it. Okay. So minimum number of operations. Okay. And what is that operation? Pick L and R and apply uh, apply max max to it and replace all the elements with the max of that subsegment. Okay. Okay. I'll repeat myself again. You have one operation in your hand. Pick L and R and replace all the elements in that subsegment with max of that subsegment. Fine. So that's the operation you you have, and you want to minimize that operation such that all the elements become zero. Okay, so for each test case, we just have to print the minimum number of operations we need. Input is just the array, right? So let's see the example test cases here. Now, usually you should always look at the example test cases uh, to make sense out of the question. So that I assume you have already done, right? You have looked at the test cases and you are not able to figure out the solution. That's why you are in this video, right? Okay, fine. So let's uh, see at the test cases and try to make sense out of uh, something. Now here in this test case, all the array elements are already zero. So anyway, we don't need to perform any operation, right? So that's a simple thing. Now in this one, you have only one element. So anyway. Uh, you only have one element which is non-zero, so you just need to snap your fingers once with, with L and R value one. Okay. Uh, this I guess I have already discussed in one of the videos. When you have these queries on like L and R involved, it's always better to take your array as one index. It uh, eases a lot of uh, mental uh, burden basically. If you pick L and R to be one base index, if you have array as one base index, whenever you have these queries of sort of where you have to pick L R, then it becomes easy. Okay. So that's just a quick uh, hint for you. Okay. Let's just see this. Uh, how can this array be converted to zero? So you can see here, uh, zero is not a problem, right? Uh, zero is there. If I pick this entire uh, subsegment, which has only non-zero elements, you know that if you have only non-zero elements, the max of that will be zero, right? Because the smallest non-negative integer, not part of it, will be zero. So yeah, basically L will be two and R will be n, and you can replace basically all of them with max of all of this, max of all of this, what zero? So only in one operation you can do it. Fine. Here, uh, let's see. So here maybe you might have think like this: I'm gonna replace this subsegment first, and then uh, this subsegment first, right? So sub of course, max of this will be zero, and max of this will be zero. Okay, uh, fine. Uh, this is one observation. Can you see something else? Uh, to think a bit. Uh, let me just go to Sublime. So, so basically, what you want to do is you want to pick L and R. You want to pick L and R and uh, replace all of them and uh, replace all the elements in this range with the max of AL, AL plus one, so on till R. Right? That's what you want to do. That is the operation you have uh, in your disposal. Fine. Um, that's one thing. Uh, then. You made one observation if all are zeros then uh, basically if all are zeros no operation is performed if you have a here you can say contiguous run of non-zero elements only one will be suffice right so if you have a contiguous run of non-zero elements then only one operation suffices here you had two uh, run of non-zero elements so you basically make you this zeros were untouched and you try to convert them to zero okay so that was one thing and um, let's see what else um, let's say i have an array here like this one two one three zero let's say eight side nine Zero, something like this. Okay. Do you agree with me? One thing uh, that uh, after applying, after applying two operations, after applying two operations with l equals to one, r equals to n, you will be able to destroy the array anyway. Okay. <laughs> l equals to one, r equals to n, right? So basically, uh, you are considering the entire array. If you apply two operations, the array will be destroyed anyway. Okay. Array will be destroyed anyway. Do you agree with me there? If you don't agree with me. Hear me out. See. In the worst case, what can happen is 0 cannot be part of this array. So maybe you can have something like this 5 and then 10. In the worst case, what will happen is 0 is not part of the array. So you have to convert all their elements to 0. So if you pick L equals to 1, R equals to n one time, uh, what will happen is L equals to n, R equals to n one time, all the elements will be converted to 0 at the start itself. Right? The start, in one operation only you can do it. But let's say if 0 was part of the array. If 0 was part of the array, 
after one operation it will be converted since 0 is part of this uh, subsegment l equals to 1 r equals to n we know that the max of that will not be 0 it will be some positive integer i don't know what that is but it will be some positive integer a a a a a right you agree with me there if i have a 0 in this uh, entire array the max of that will not be 0 it will be some positive integer right some non negative integer but yeah of course positive integer because it's not 0 right so all the elements will replace this positive guy and now after one more operation definitely everything will be converted to 0 right because all the elements are positive here and 0 is not part of it so the smallest non negative integer not part of this array uh, is simply 0. So, after two operations, any way you can destroy the array, right? Fine. See, if 0 is not part of the array, definitely in one operation you can do it. Okay. But if 0 is part of the array, in one operation you will convert all their elements to a positive integer. I don't know what that is. Here in this case, it will be a positive integer 0, 1, 2. Yeah. So, in this case, it will be converted to 2, right? And after one more operation, definitely you will convert all of them to 0 because now the max will definitely be 0. If max was not 0 for r equals 1, r equals 1 the first time, after applying one operation, definitely max will become 0. Definitely, max will become 0 because you will first replace all of them with a positive integer. Right? Cool. So, that is that. So, currently, you do not need to do more than two operations. Okay. If all the elements are 0, 0 operation. Okay. So, what are the observations we have made here? Okay. I will write it down. If uh, all elements are 0, you do not need to do any operation. Fine. If all elements are 0, you do not need to do any operation. If all elements are non zero, if all elements are non zero, you need to do one operation. Right, all the elements are non-zero. You need to do one operation. Fine. So here you can see all the elements are non-zero. You can do one operation. Okay. What else? Um, am I missing anything here? Did you see this example? All the non-zero elements are together. All the non-zero elements are together. Right. So there is a continuous run of non-zero elements here. All the non-zero elements are not together. Okay. So I should I write here? Uh, if all the non-zero elements are together. Okay. So here you can see all the non-zero elements are together. Similarly, I can give you one more example here. You can see. You can have something like this 0, 0, um, 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 0, 0. If all the non zero elements are together, you can of course replace all the non zero elements with this one operation, right? Pick L equals to here at this part and R equals to this part, and one operation will be able to convert all of them to 0, right? So if all elements are non zero or all the non zero elements are together, so this is one and the same thing. If you see, if, you, if I combine these two conditions, they are exactly the same thing. So maybe I can uh, remove this. All the non zero elements are together, you only need one operation. You only need one operation. Fine. So, if all the elements are 0, anyway, don't need to do any operation. If all the non zero elements are together, like this or this, right, all the non zero are together, or basically non zero elements, uh, 0 is not present, then only one operation. So, this is maybe I can write else if, and else, anyway, we'll need two operations. Anyway, we'll need two operations. Else, basically, this is the case where non zero elements are not together. All the non zero elements are not together. Okay. That's one thing. So, here also you can see all the, uh, the non zero elements are together. Right. The, the question is simple. I guess uh, the main observation was in two operations, you can anyway destroy the array. In two operations, anyway, destroy the array. If you, if you pick L equals 1, R equals 2, in two operations, the array will be destroyed, no matter what the array is. But these observations were there. By looking at the example, you found out if all the elements are 0, 0 operations are required. If all the non zero elements are together, if all the non zero elements are together, if all the non zero elements are together, you only need one operation. But if in that else case, basically, all the non zero elements are not together, all the non zero elements are not together, then definitely you need two operations. What are those two operations? Simply this L equals 1, R equals 2. Fine, the question is done here. Now let's see how can we implement it. Okay, so how would you like to implement it? Uh, how can we do it? So, how should we think about it? So, basically, uh, the question is revolving around uh, this part, right? So, if all the non zero elements are together, uh, then we can print 1. Okay, so this case we can handle fine. But if all the non zero elements are together, uh, we have to print 1, otherwise, we have to print 2. So, what if uh, I found out, uh, I find out uh, that uh, what is the first occurrence of non zero element and what is the last occurrence of non zero element? Right. So, here the first occurrence of non-zero element is this and the last occurrence of non-zero element is this. Then what I can do is I can go through uh, that entire entire subsegment. basically. Uh, this is the first occurrence and this is the last occurrence, right? So, I can go through that segment. If I found out uh, all the elements are non-zero, then I, I know for the fact that all the non-zero elements are together. If not, all the non-zero elements are not together, then I can print 2. Right. So, what I'll do is I can initialize the bound here. So, maybe I can write here first and uh, last for or maybe L and R only, right? L equals to minus 1, um, R equals to minus 1. So basically, these are the bounds for the first non-zero and the last non-zero elements. So I can go through my array. I equals to one. I equals to one. I less than equals to less than equals to n. I plus plus. Uh, if array of i is not equals to zero, array of i is not equals to zero. Then so if array of i is not equals to zero, what I can check is uh, if uh, l is equal equals to minus one. If l is minus one, definitely r is also minus one. Uh, Maybe I can just write it like this. L equals to minus 1, R equals to minus 1. What you can do is you can replace L equals to R equals to I. Fine. Else, uh, definitely both of them are not minus 1 now. So you can, in this case, just replace R. Right? Because uh, 
n will update only once when the first non-zero element is found. So when the first non-zero element is found, so in that case l and r both will be minus one. In that case, you update both of them, l and r. But from next time onwards, whenever you find a non-zero element, just update r because I want to find out the last occurrence, right? Fine. So I have l and r. Now first things first, uh, if non-zero elements are not present, l and r will still be minus one. So this is the case. So this is the case. Only zeros are present. So here you don't need to do any operation, right? Here you don't uh, need to do any operation. You can just print c out zero followed by a new line. But only zeros are present. Now let's see uh, one more thing uh, else here. So now let's just uh, go through. Uh, let's just go through array of l and r and basically check if uh, all if all the non-zero elements are together or not. So for int i equals to l, i less than equals to r, i plus plus. Okay. If array of i is equal equal to zero, is equal equals to zero. This means all the non-zero elements are not together. All the non-zero elements are not together. So in this case, what you can do is you can print two and return. So return basically uh, return out the solve. So basically move on to the next test case. Okay, move on to the next test case. That's what it means. Return. After you have gone through everything, uh, so after you have gone through everything, anyway you can print here one. Right. So basically, uh, if l and r is minus one, only zeros are present. Then just print a zero number of operations, and uh, otherwise go through the entire basically go through the subsegment. This. This subsegment, basically the first occurrence and last occurrence of non-zero element, and check whether they are together. If in the middle you found out a zero element, then definitely, uh, then definitely you know that all the non-zero elements are not together. You can print two and return. Otherwise, still in the part of else, okay? Because uh, you don't, you cannot print here. Still, still the part of else, you can print one. So this is a case when uh, all the non-zero elements are together. Yeah, and that's that. Um, I think this should work. Let me just quickly run it. So here it should be zero. It should be one here. It should be two here, and this is fine, right? I I think this works. Let me just quickly submit it. It works. Uh, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.